Thanks, Suki. We built you a special bed and you took one look and said, thanks, I hate it. Hello, everybody. I'm Miss Mon Mon. Welcome to my channel. Today, I will be sharing with you how I built my Snoopy-inspired doghouse to celebrate Sarsaparilla's Snoopy and Peanuts collection. Now, I've already done a review of the pieces that I received from this collection, this cardigan and skirt included. I love it. I've been wearing this collection non-stop since I've had it. It is so beautiful. I really wanted to do something special when it came to shooting these pieces. And I'm also trying to push and challenge myself. As someone with migraines, I get a lot of brain fog. So I find sometimes learning new things really difficult. Whereas when I was younger, it was quite easy. And I thought, let's see if I can learn a little bit about woodwork. So of course, I called up my dad and he was more than happy to spend a couple of evenings in his shed. And we built a Snoopy inspired doghouse. This is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. This is just us showing and sharing our process of how we made our doghouse. There was a lot of trial and error. We also only used recycled materials that we found either on verge side pickups or free pallets that are on the side of the road for you to take and use as you need. The build took us about just under two weeks as we only had a couple of evenings together. There were a couple of hours here and there, but it was a really great way to learn some new things. So I really hope that you enjoy watching the process of how we made our Snoopy house. To make this video a little bit easier, I will now pass you on to voiceover Mon Mon and she will share the process. Alrighty, let's get started by making the base frame. These are all the pieces of wood that you need, including the measurements, and these will make up the sides and studs, which will help support. Dad used a bench saw. I was really helpful. And we also use this machine, which I think is called a thickener, to help shave off the wood. We used heaps of clamps to hold down all the edges of our structure. And Dad makes sure to teach me the importance of making sure everything is square and properly measured in between each step. Yes, he made me measure everything multiple times. So obviously you need two of the frames and these will become your sides and I went ahead and double screwed them in there. I think I did a pretty good job. What do you guys think? All the wood that we used for this project was either found on the side of the road or was a free pickup because we really tried to keep costs down. Yeah, I am so helpful in this project. I promise I'm more useful later. Once we had our frames, we now had to put in our studs, which are basically ribs to add extra support. As I was planning to sit on the doghouse, I really didn't want it to break under my weight because I have been eating quite a few extra dumplings. These were wood glued and then stapled in there and we used two studs per side for a total of four studs. As dad was cutting all the wood, he also engaged me in some horror stories about people chopping certain body parts off with wood cutting equipment. Needless to say, I was not impressed. With our two sides complete, we added some beams to connect our walls together. And using loads of glues, we clamped them overnight and planned to screw them in the next day. If dad can share one tip with you, it's that you can never have too many clamps. Let's move on to making the roof. There are quite a few parts that we need for the roof. For our particular project, we wanted to make sure that we had a flat top as I planned to sit on top of the roof as part of the photo shoot. We also wanted to make the roof detachable from the base because we would find that a lot easier to transport and it might just help distribute the weight a bit. Here I am constructing the flat top frame and we used a rebate to really enforce the structure. 
here I am following dad's advice, measuring and making sure everything is squared and perfect before I screwed it all together. I think I'm actually getting quite good at this, except this one bit here, which, you know, I made sure to share with you all. Whilst I was doing this, dad went ahead and cut out some rafters. We had a total of eight rafters, so four per side. And they had a long end of 445 millimeters and a short end of 405 millimeters. So they were cut with a bit of an angle, just so you get that roof-like slat. I also really love this machine and I found it so fascinating. If you have a look closely, we have a piece of twine going down the center of our flat top frame. This is our center mark and dad recommends you always measure out from the center mark just so you know whether you are making sure everything lines up. We went ahead and attached the rafters so we get that old school looking rooftop. Dad being dad and me being me, we completely over-engineered this entire project, but we went ahead and added four support frames just to make sure that the roof was really sturdy and could hold a lot of weight. During the shoot, this was definitely a comfort to know that I wouldn't fall off. So each one of the rafters had a sister supporting frame, which were glued, clamped, and then screwed in. Dad wishes to advise you all that between a lot of these steps, we had a day or two to let all glue fully dry, just to add a bit more extra strength. And then it was time for my favourite part of the day, tea time. Also, the hay fever was really kicking in at this point, so sorry about the red nose. As most of our wood came from old pallets and whatever we had lying around, the top of our roof is actually made out of two parts, so this is us trying to measure it up. We did fill the rebate with a reinforcement piece of wood, so I would highly recommend that. If you do plan on making yours as flat topped as mine, if you want to sit on it, but let's face it, we all do. It is now time to add the walls. Before we do so, I had to add some reinforcement and support frames so they all sit flush as it's easier to put the walls on when you have more material to attach them to. Once these filler pieces were adhered, we could attach the sides. We started by adding some wood glue to where the wood would make contact with the walls. And we then used our handy dandy staple gun and stapled it all together. At first I was really afraid of the staple gun, but towards the end, oh my gosh, I love it. I want one in pink. We of course repeated this process until all four walls of the doghouse were covered. We didn't bother putting in flooring for the doghouse as it just really wasn't necessary. With all four walls, we could then move on to filling any gaps, holes or little crevices in the project with some multi-filler. I went ahead and did that with the spatula whilst dad made sure that everything was even and level. He really is obsessed with measuring everything a thousand times. Once I had patched up everything to dad's approval, he went ahead and used his sander. He would like to know that he has lost the dust bag of his sander, but we were both wearing masks at this point. It had been about a week at this point and I was so happy to move on to the decorations and we started by adding two coats of base. Dad of course had a lot of fun micromanaging and telling me that all my brush strokes could have been improved. Between each base coat I use a very fine sander just to make sure she was smooth and lush and I was pretty happy with how it turned out. On the final day, we grabbed some spray paint and absolutely went to town. Angie Delari Photography came and joined me for this bit because who doesn't love just spray painting something? Yes, I know we should have been wearing masks, but we just got carried away. I kind of wish that we added some black panelling just so it looked a bit more cartoony. So I think we might eventually add that in there. We also painted on a door as seen here. And that is how we made our Snoopy-inspired doghouse. 
Wow, what an adventure. Welcome back. So that is how my dad and I made our Snoopy doghouse. A massive shout out to Angie Delari Photography for coming over and adding some spray paint to it. We had a lot of fun and I love how the photos turned out. If you would like to see them, they are on my blog. I also have a couple of photos of the building process, which will also be on my blog, which you can find in the description box below. Thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. I have had an absolute blast sharing this project with you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've loved having you here. Starting next week, we'll be launching into all our end of year festive videos and vlogs. There will be a lot going on and I might even be releasing a couple of extra vlogs on a few Mondays. So please feel free to like, comment and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of that. I can't believe we are wrapping up the year, how exciting. I will see you all next week with a brand new video, but until then, be kind, be true, be you, and have a wonderful week. Bye. Yeah, you get extra kisses, yeah. Do I need earmuffs? What?